Yo, what's going on YouTube? This is Lag on Lock here and welcome back to the BYU Cougars Dynasty here on NCAA 07 for the PSP. Now, as always, guys, let's go ahead and take a look at that good old ESPN magazine. Arizona takes USC to overtime but are unable to pull off the upset. So as you can see, guys, it was a pretty close game. Well, obviously it was a close game. They went into overtime, but the fact that USC uh, struggled against Arizona, it just means that pretty much no one is safe from um, an upset. So the players of the game, we have Horn from Arizona, who had 26 carries for 101 yards and two touchdowns. And then for USC, they had Warren with 22 uh, carries for 157 yards and a touchdown. So guys, in the last video, we were able to defeat Utah State 20 to 17 in a good game where I thought that Utah was just gonna run up the field and kick a field goal to win, but we were able to play smart on defense, make a smart place, and we won the game. But the player of the game, we have Johnson from BYU. He went 11 for 19 for 187 yards. He did score a touchdown. He had four carries for 30 yards. And then for Utah State, they had Anderson with four receptions for 74 yards and two touchdowns so now guys taking a look at the end season recruiting board dominique cook he was impressed on our last game because his interest level went up dominique was impressed with the way we treated his parents as well so you know i'm pretty sure byu went above and beyond to make sure that everyone in his family was taken care of so now guys we're going to take a look at the top 25 polls here and at number one we have the usc trojans after defeating arizona 34 to 27. At number two we have the miami hurricanes who had a bye week at number three we have the lsu tigers as they beat tulane 45 24. at number four we have the ohio state buckeyes as they beat penn state 24 21. at number five we have the tennessee volunteers as they defeated marshall 30 24. at number six we have the michigan wolverines who defeated west Wisconsin 34-27. At number 7 we have the Boise State Broncos as they defeated Hawaii 27-6. At number 8 we have the UTEP Miners who beat University of New Mexico 42-21. At number 9 we have the Cal Golden Bears who defeated Arizona State 34-12. At number 10 we have the Auburn Tigers who defeated Buffalo 35-17. At number 11 we have the Boston College Eagles who lost to North Carolina State 26-21. Man they lost their first game of the year man that should have been us at number 12 we have the texas longhorns and they lost to iowa state oh my goodness iowa state has defeated two ranked teams in a row but they were able to defeat texas 32 16 at number 13 we have the georgia bulldogs who beat colorado university 23 17 at number 14 we have the louisville cardinals who lost to kansas state 24 21 in an upset this game is full of upsets man it's, i like it but at the same time it's like man who's gonna be number one by the end of the season at number 15 we have the florida state seminoles who defeated rice 45 3 at number 16 we have the virginia tech hoagies who uh, beat cincinnati 17 to 12 at number 17 we have virginia cavaliers who lost to georgia tech 28 24 another upset right there at number 18 we have the florida gators who defeated the university of kentucky 41 0 at number 19 we have the uh, north carolina state wolf pack as they defeated boston college 26 21. At number 20, we have Pitt as they def defeated uh, Citadel 52-10. At number 21, we have the Alabama Crimson Tide as they beat Arkansas 28-20. At number 22, we have the Fight and Irish who defeated Michigan State 37-7. At number 23, we have the Iowa Hawkeyes and they have lost their second game in a row. This time to the Fight and Illini, they lost 38-13. At number 24, we have the South Carolina Gamecocks. They are now ranked at they're defeating FAU 39 to 6 and then at 25 we have the Arizona State Sun Devils as they lost to California 34 12. Taking a look at the additional details here we have Iowa State they are coming up big they might make it to the top 25 by next uh, week and we have Georgia Tech Oregon Kansas State Colorado and Wisconsin and the only team that was dropped out was number 25 Colorado so now guys we're going to take a look at the Heisman watch and we have some 
new players here. First, we have number 34, Daniel Houston, a senior redshirt halfback out of Alabama. At number two, we have number 22, Juan Burley, a senior halfback out of LSU. At number three, we have number 27, Walter Henry, the sophomore redshirt halfback out of Tennessee. And then at number four, we have number 23, Jay Freeman, the sophomore halfback out of Florida State. And then last, we have number six, Robbie Ginn, the junior redshirt halfback out of Georgia. So all we have is running backs and the top five Heisman Trophy candidates. So this week, guys, I'm just going to go over the conference leaders in each conference. So first, we have the Mountain West, which is the Wyoming Cowboys. They are 2-2 two and two so far this year, 1-0 and in the conference. And then we have the Pac-10, which we can see the Cal Golden Bears are doing an amazing job being 4-0 this year, 1-0 and in the conference. In the SEC, we have the South Carolina Gamecocks. They are 4-0 so far this year, 2-0 in the conference in the Sun Belt we have the FIU Golden Panthers they're doing amazing too they are 4-0 so far this year 1-0 in conference play in the WAC conference we have the Boise State Broncos they are 4-0 1-0 in the conference in the ACC we have the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets who are 3-1 1-0 in the conference it should be North Carolina State but for some reason this game thinks that Georgia Tech should be the number one team in the ACC in the Big Ten, we have the Illinois Fighting Illini, who are 4-0, four, four oh, excuse me, 1-0 in the conference. And we also have Ohio State. They are 4-0 and 1-0 oh in the conference as well. But they think the Fighting Illini deserve the number one spot. In the Big 12, man, I knew this was coming. Look at that. Iowa State Cyclones. They are 3-1 so far this year. 1-0 in conference. In the Big East, we have the Pittsburgh Panthers, who are 3-1, 1-0 in the conference. In the CUSA, we have the ECU Pirates, who are 4-0, 2-0 in the conference. And we also have the Houston Cougars, who are 4-0, 2-0 in conference play as well. And then looking at the Independents, these are the teams that don't belong to a conference. They just play whoever. We have Notre Dame. They are 4-0. In the MAC Conference, we have the Northern Illinois Huskies. They are 3-1, 2-0 in the conference so this week guys we are playing versus the tcu horn frogs they are two and one so far this year when it comes to their injured players they have hester their outside linebacker who's out for two weeks in their last game they lost to texas tech 34 to 27 when it comes to their offensive leaders and passing they have hughes who has 52 completions out of 84 attempts for 817 yards eight touchdowns and he has yet to throw an interception when it comes to rushing they have uh rogers or Rogers? I don't see a D, so it's Rogers? <laughs> He has 43 attempts for 216 yards, averaging 5 yards per rush. He has 2 touchdowns and averaging 72 yards per game. When it comes to receiving, they have Henderson with 8 receptions for 195 yards, averaging 24.4. He has 2 touchdowns so far this year, and he's averaging 65 yards per game. Taking a look at their defensive leaders, they have Carter, who's leading their team in tackling with 17. Johnson, who's leading TCU in sacks with 3. And then they have Hester, who is out on an injury but he's leading their team in interceptions with one. So that's going to do it for the team information for the TCU Horn Frogs. I'll see you guys out there on the field. So here we are guys out in Texas to take on the TCU Horn Frogs. Now I know it's been a minute since my last post and that's only due to the fact that I was on vacation. But anyway, we're going to continue with this dynasty. We're going to have the session who gets tackled out of bounds after getting the first down. It's going to be first and 10 at the 50 yard line. Johnson steps back, rolls to his left, sees Zach Bonet who makes the catch and that's going to be a first down for BYU. Good job on that play. We're going to have the session this time. And that's going to be a six-yard loss on that play. It's going to be second and 16. 
Johnson rolls to his left, sees Whitworth. Whitworth with the catch, and that's going to be a touchdown for BYU, a 29-yard touchdown pass. Man, Whitworth is my best wide receiver on my team. I don't care what no one says. Even though he does have the highest overall, you know, if I see him open, I'm always going to pass it to him. Look at that. Good catch right there, and that's going to be six for BYU. Now it's going to be first and ten for TCU. Can they answer back? Hughes hands it off to Rodgers. Rodgers get tackled behind the line of scrimmage. And now it's going to be second and 11. A one yard lost on that one. Hughes, uh, he's making some adjustments. Throws it. And Lucas with the amazing catch on that play. And now it's going to be third and six. Hands it off to Rodgers. Rodgers, he's going to get the first down and more. As he finally gets brought down. And now it's going to be first and 10 at the 42. Hughes, option play. And it's going to be a fumble. A bad option. And John Joyce is able to pick it up. I tried to get the scoop and score, but whatever. We still get the ball. It's going to be first and 10 for BYU. Johnson throws it to Zach Bonet, who makes a diving catch. Good job on that play. Now it's going to be first and 10 to 24 for BYU. Option play. And Dallas Johnson, a bad option toss. We'll pitch. And Vincent is able to pick it up. And just like that, we're going the other way. Now it's going to be first and 10 for TCU. With only a minute and 30 seconds left to go in this quarter. Hughes, option play, hands off to Harrison. And I missed the tackle right there as Reed is able to bring down Harrison. And now it's going to be a first and 10. Hughes. Hands off to Murphy, and that is very unique. They have an impact running back and an impact fullback. Option play. Hughes trying to get ahead, but he can't, and he gets brought down behind the line of scrimmage. It's going to be third and ten. Hughes throws it, and Murphy's able to make the catch, and he gets knocked out of bounds by Brown. And now it's going to be first and 10 for BYU with only 22 seconds left to go in the first quarter. We're going to hand up to Session. And Session is going to get knocked out of bounds. And he's just a yard short of the first down. Johnson hands it off to Session, who gets the first down, trying to juke. And he gets stuck, but he does get the first down. And now it's only five seconds left to go in the first quarter. This is the last play. Johnson rolls to his right. Sees Gabe Thomas, who makes the catch, and that's going to be a first down for BYU. And that's going to be the end of the first quarter with the BYU 7 and the TCU Horned Frog 0. Johnson rolls to his left. And that was a bad pass by Dallas Johnson. And I thought that was going to be a pick 6, but Jackson, I don't know why, but he did a spin move on the inside. And as you can see, Eric Randall is hurt. And that's going to be a big hit for our offensive line. And now it's going to be first and 10 for TCU at the 48-yard line. Hughes, option play. Throws it to Murphy, and Murphy has it. And he gets brought down. Man, they just love running the option. Hughes, right and he gets tackled behind the line of scrimmage. They tried to go with the fake there. It's going to be a seven-yard loss. Hughes steps back, throws it, and I had my back turned. I don't know why Brown turned around the other way. But anyway, it's an incomplete pass. It's going to be third and 17. Hughes. And it's going to be a fumble as Branch picks it up. And now it's going to be a first and 10 for BYU. Play action. Tries to find someone, throws it to Howell, and it's an incomplete pass. It's going to be second and 10 now for BYU. Option play. And another bad option as we're trying to pick it up. No one's picking it up. Okay. And Brewster picks it up, and he's going to go in for a scoop and score. That is our third turnover so far in this game. It's going to be first and 10 now for BYU once again. Play action. Johnson's going to take it for himself, and he dives forward, but does he get the first down? No, he doesn't. They're going to say it's going to be uh, second and inches. 
Hands off the session, and he gets tackled behind the line of scrimmage. It's going to be 31 now. And on 31, we're going to hit off the session again. And, jeez, the offensive line got pushed back on that one. And that's going to lead to a fourth and six, man. Our offensive line, man, we could have got the first down. I don't know why they didn't give us the first and ten after that dive. It looked like he crossed it. But now it's going to be first and ten for TCU. Hughes throws it, and it's an incomplete pass. Throws it out of bounds. I don't know why he threw it that way. They were three defenders. Hughes throws it. And it's going to be intercepted by Williams. Can he get a pick six? And look at that. A pick six for BYU on that play. Man, good job for John Joyce to tip that off to Williams. Look at that. A 50-yard interception return. Look at this. Hughes throws it. Tipped. And Williams is able to pick it up. Now, I did think, <laughs> I was thinking in the back of my head, like, man, this dude's going to get tackled. But <laughs> thank God he did it. So now it's going to be first and 10 for TCU after throwing a pick six. Hughes tries to find someone, throws it, and it sails out of bounds. But Brown was able to make the catch, but, you know, it doesn't count. Second and 10 now. Hughes. Throws it downfield, and Rodgers has a step on Ben as he hurdles, and he gets in for six. Now it's going to be first and ten for BYU, man. I don't know what our defense was doing on that last play. With only a minute left to go in this uh, first half, let's see what Johnson can do. And an incomplete pass. I don't know who I was throwing it to. Now it's going to be second and ten. And on second and ten, Johnson. Rolls off to his left, sees Whitworth, and Whitworth, Whitworth with the catch, excuse me. <laughs> Third and five now. Johnson tries to find someone, throws it to Session, and Session couldn't make the catch. And the kick is up. Great kick on that one. Henderson has it. And Zach Bonet forced a fumble. As we're trying to pick it up, and Jones is able to get it. And now it's going to be first and 10 for BYU to set us up at the 30-yard line. Johnson, option play. And another bad pitch as we fumble the ball again as Johnson picks it up. Oh, boy. Another turnover. I think that makes it four turnovers. Yeah, that's our fourth turnover. Anyway, guys, it's going to be halftime with the score 14-14. First and 10 now for TCU at the 25-yard line. Hughes is making some adjustments. Go with the option play. Hands off to Rodgers, and John Joyce is able to ta uh, tackle Rodgers behind the line of scrimmage. <laughs> it's going to be second and 13. Excuse me. Can't talk today. They're going to hand off to Murphy this time, who breaks free. And he gets tackled just a yard short of the first down. Third and inches. He's going to off to Murphy, who gets the first down. And more. And he get brought down on that play. Man, Murphy has five rushes and averaging 10 per rush. That's, that's crazy. Murphy has it again. And he's trapped, but he does get a few yards on that play. It's going to be second and six. Hughes, option play, and Hughes gets brought down. Now it's going to be third and three. Now TCU, they are three of five when it comes to third down conversions. Can they get this? And Hughes, he gets it. Man, we got to find a way to stop these <laughs> option plays because that's TCU's eighth uh, first down so far in this game. Hughes, look at that, another option. That's all they do. As we knock Rodgers out of bounds, Corey Hughes appears to injure his chest on that play. So let's see if he can make a speedy recovery. It's going to be second and one for T, uh, TCU. Going to hand off to Murphy. Murphy, he gets, <laughs> he takes a big hit by John Joyce as Rutledge is able to pick it up. That is TCU's fourth turnover so far in this game. So many turnovers, man. It makes no sense. Now it's going to be first and ten for BYU. Johnson rolls to his left. Sees Whitworth, and I, I wish he made that catch, but it was overthrown. Uh, now it's going to be second and ten. Hand off to Session. Session with the juke move, and he gets the first down. Good job for Session. 
And now we're getting a report back that Corey Hughes has broken ribs and he's going to be out for two weeks. So I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing because I don't know who their backup is. So now it's going to be second and 10 after an incomplete pass. I threw it in traffic there. I don't know why I did that. Johnson tries to find someone and Marcus Morris makes the catch. It tipped off the defender's back and now it's going to be first and 10. With only a minute left to go in the third quarter, we're going to hand off the session. The session gets met behind the line of scrimmage, a four yard loss. Hands off the session again, and he gets tackled. Man, third and 14 now. Johnson rolls to his left. And I saw a session, but I threw a bullet. I should have just lobbed it. But that's going to be the end of the, end of the third quarter with the score 14-14. We have one more quarter to go. First and 10 now. Williams. Takes a big hit. That is their backup quarterback. He's not doing so well. Second, it's second and 16. Williams throws it. Nearly picked off, man. Come on, Jones. That could have been a pick six. Now it's going to be third and 16. Williams tries to find someone as he fumbles the football, but Murphy is able to pick it up. And now it's going to be fourth and 25 for TCU as they get ready to punt this one. And the kick is up. Morris is back there, has it, and I should have caught a fair catch, but it doesn't matter because Morris has it, and he's going to break free, and no one's able to get him. That's going to be a touchdown for BYU. A 51-yard touchdown return for Morris, man, and that's our first punt return of the dynasty. Take a look at this. I forgot to call it fair catch because that could have ended up being a fumble, but Morris was like, nah, I got it, and then he sat there ready to for a touchdown. So now it's going to be first and 10 for TCU with only 2 minutes and 45 seconds left to go in this game. Can they score? They're going to hand off to Rodgers. Rodgers is going to go up the middle, and he gets a first down. Now it's going to be first and 10 for TCU. Williams hands it off to Murphy this time, and he's just going to cut back. And I think he's just a yard short. They're going to say second and inches. Williams. Option play, and I don't know how we missed that tackle, but Williams, he seems to be a little bit faster than Hughes. Well, he is faster than Hughes, so that's going to really hurt us if they keep doing these option plays. He's going to throw it up, and that should have been intercepted. It's going to be second and 10 now. We just have to contain these option plays. That's all we have to do. Play action. Throws it. And it's going to be third and 13, a three-yard loss on that one. Williams throws it, and that should have been an interception. I saw the play. I, like, I read that pass, but they didn't give me the interception. Now it's going to be fourth and four. They have to get this one. And Williams going to cut up, and he gets the first down. He can't pass, but he sure can't run with that football. It's going to be first and ten now. They only have a minute left to go. Uh, they, have to, they have a minute to score, excuse me. <laughs> now it's going to be second and six, a four-yard pickup on that pass. Williams throws it to Henderson, and Henderson gets tackled behind the line of scrimmage by McKinley. It's going to be third and six. Williams throws it downfield, trying to go for it all, and this is an incomplete pass. It's going to be fourth and six. They have to convert to keep their hopes, uh, keep the hope alive that they're going to win this game. Williams. Look at that. Just option play after option play, and they get the first down. And they're going to rush the offense here, trying to score quick, fast, and in a hurry. 35 seconds left to go. Williams throws it to Brown, who's open, and he gets in for six. Who left him open? Who man was that? Look at this. Man, I can't believe that happened. All we had to do was stop TCU on that play right there. So now it's going to be the end of the fourth quarter with the score 21 to 21 as we head straight into overtime as TCU get the ball first. They're going to hand it off to Rodgers. Rodgers with the juke move, and he gets brought down. First down for TCU at the 12-yard line. Williams, option play, 
and he gets brought down. We got to do better containing this quarterback. That's going to be a four-yard pickup for TCU. And a toss play to Murphy. And Murphy's going to get in for six. Just like that. And there is a flag down the play, but I kind of figured because I kind of jumped the snap a little early. So now it's going to be first and ten for BYU. Can we answer back? Johnson rolls to his left. Sees Gabe Thomas open, who makes the catch, and that's going to be a touchdown for BYU. The first play for BYU in overtime, and we score a touchdown, a 25-yard touchdown pass. And that's going to do it for the end of the first uh, overtime number one. The score is 28-28. to 28. Now we're heading to second overtime as we get ball first this time. Johnson, option play, hands off the session. Session has it. Hurdles over the defender, and he does it. Uh, he gets a good gain on that play. Now it's gonna be first and goal. We only have three yards to go to get into the end zone. We're gonna hand off the session, and session gets tackled at the line of scrimmage. It's gonna be second and goal now. Hands off the session again. Who runs up the middle, breaks a tackle, and that's gonna be a touchdown for BYU. So now it's gonna be first and ten for TCU. Option play, obviously. They go. <laughs> Williams has it, and he gets tackled. Man, I, I kind of missed the tackle right there. Now it's going to be first and goal. They only have seven yards to go to get into the end zone. Williams hands it off to Murphy, and Murphy gets tackled behind the line of scrimmage. It's going to be second and goal. A one yard loss on that one. Williams option play, and I was looking for Murphy, or was that <laughs> was that Rogers? I couldn't tell. But Williams was like, hey, whatever, I'll take it for myself, and he scores a touchdown. And now we're heading into overtime number three. TCU has the ball. It's going to be first and ten. Hands it off to Rodgers. Rodgers is stuck. And what the heck? He's able to make something out of nothing. <laughs> and Rodgers gets the first down. First and goal, Williams steps back, throws it, and Brown's able to make the catch. That's the second touchdown of the day. And now they're going to have to go for a two-point conversion. Williams, spin move, and what, what the heck is this dude Williams doing? Dude playing like with Damian Thomason. What the heck is this? <laughs> so now it's going to be our turn. Can we answer back? Not only do we have to score, but we have to get a two-point conversion. Play action. Johnson rolls up to the left, sees Whitworth, and Whitworth couldn't make the catch, and now it's going to be second and ten. Johnson, come on, someone's open out there. Throws it to Thomas, Thomas has it, and he's going to get in for six. Good job for Gabe Thomas. Another touchdown. Okay, we have to go for the two-point conversion here. Hands off the Session, and Session's going to get in for the two-point conversion. But hold up, guys, there is a flag down on the play. Let's see who's on. Yes, sir. It's going to be offsides on rolling. So that's going to do it for overtime number three with a score 43-43. We're going to head, uh, head over to overtime number four. <laughs> First and ten. Johnson rolls off to the left. Sees how. How makes the catch. Can he get a touchdown? And no, he gets knocked out of bounds. We're spotted at the one-yard line. Hands off to Witherspoon, and Witherspoon, he couldn't get in for six. Now it's going to be second and goal. And we're going to run it with Johnson. He breaks a tackle, but he gets brought down. I don't know why he uh, was running backwards after that he broke a tackle, broke that tackle. Anyway, we're going to have the session. And session gets brought down. Now it's going to be fourth and goal. We have. I'm going to go for it here. I don't have to. I kick a field goal, but, you know. Those are the Morris who gets the touchdown. I was going to kick a field goal, but TCU, they're doing so well on offense with these option plays. I said, I got to go for it. So now we're going to go for a two-point conversion. Hands off to Johnson, option play, and Sessions unable to get into the end zone for the two-point conversion. So now it's going to be TCU's turn. They have to score a touchdown. Williams, play action. Wait, what was going on? <laughs> throws it and John Joyce you didn't get the interception that would have been in, that would have been the end of the game if you got that pick Williams option play look at that man this dude has probably 50 yards rushing no he has 68 okay it's gonna be first thing 
First and goal now for TCU. And Williams gonna take it for himself again. And he gets a few a few yards on that play. Williams, option play. And he's gonna take it for himself as he gets into the end zone for six. Man, these option plays are ridiculous. And now they have to go for a two-point conversion. If they get this, they win the game. Williams, and he gets brought down behind line scrimmage. Good job for our defense. Good job right there. And now we're heading into the fifth overtime, man. This is crazy. Five overtimes. I've never been in a five overtime game before. Now it's going to be first and ten for TCU. And let's see what they can do here. Williams. And we're able to bring down Williams. Okay, our defense is starting to pick up what they're doing. Now it's going to be second and 11. A one-yard loss on the play. Toss play to Murphy. And I couldn't get to him. And Bain is able to bring him down, but they do get the first down. This dude has 101 yards so far in this game. Williams, option play. And we're Stop able right to contain Colonel the Scott. quarterback. Good job right there. Now it's going to be second and goal. Another option play. And he Rodgers does get a few yards on that play, but good thing it wasn't a touchdown. Now it's going to be third and goal. Williams, option, option play. And we can tank the quarterback again. Now it's going to be fourth and goal. Good job by our defense. Oh, boy, because our option plays, they were... <laughs> we're just going to go back and forth. <laughs> so now it's going to be fourth and goal as they get set to kick a field goal. The kick is up, and the kick is good. So now all we have to do is score a touchdown, and we can win the game. All we have to do is score. Now it's going to be first and ten for BYU. Johnson throws it to Gabe Thomas, and he doesn't make the catch. You have to make those catches, man. Now it's going to be second and ten. We're going to have the session. Session. He's going to roll out to the right, and he does get the first down. Now TCU, they do have the number one rush defense in the nation, but we're doing pretty well right now. Now it's going to be first and goal for BYU. And a broken play as Johnson gets brought down. I don't know what happened on that one. It's going to be second and goal. And on second and goal, play action. Whitworth with the catch, and he gets in for six. That's going to be the end of the game. As we defeated TCU 55-52 to in our first conference play of the season. Take a look at this, guys. Whitworth was open. The defender tried to bat it down, but it's too little too late as Whitworth comes through clutch once again. What a great game, man. I've never uh, been in a five overtime game before. But shout out to TCU, man. Those option plays, man, and all those trick plays. I, I thought I was gonna lose. But anyway, guys, that's gonna do it. Let's go ahead and take a look at the player of the game as we have Marcus Morris, the senior redshirt wide receiver who had 75 all-purpose yards and two total touchdowns. He came through big in the fourth quarter with that punt return, also uh, scoring in overtime on a fourth and four. So, you know, good job for Marcus Morris. I thought it was going to be Whitworth. But anyway, guys, let's go ahead and take a look at the game stats. So congratulations, you have just finished the number one classic game of all time. Go to my NCAA ESPN Instant Classic. To reflect on your accomplishments, we had a greatness score of 1,673. Taking a look at the game stats, guys, the score was 55 to 52. Man, what an amazing game. When it comes to first downs, we had 14, they had 19. I kept trying to stop them on the option. They kept doing option plays, and my players act like they didn't know how to tackle. When it comes to total offense, we had 296, they had 403. Looking at their rushing, uh, they they rushed 40 times for 252 yards. They rushed 22 for 88. When it comes to passing, we were 11 for 23 and we scored five touchdowns. They were 11 for 21 and they scored three touchdowns today. Taking a look at passing yards, we had 208, they had 151. Uh, we didn't get sacked at all this game, but we were able to get to their quarterback two times. Third down conversions, we were zero for five and we still 
<laughs> we still won this one and they were four for 10. When it comes to fourth down conversions, we were one for one, they were two for two. Two point conversions, both teams were one for two in two point conversions. In the red zone, uh, we were in the red zone three times and scored all three times. They were in the red zone six times and scored five touchdowns and one field goal. Both teams had four turnovers in peace. So nobody threw any interceptions or fumble during overtime. In terms of turnovers, we're gonna look at fumble we have uh, we fumbled the ball three times and lost it three times. They fumbled the ball five times and lost it three times as well. Uh, and both teams threw one interception. Total yards 427, and they were just a yard shy of getting 500 total yards. And then time of possession we had 536. They had 1024. Taking a look at the individual stats now. Number 12 Dallas Johnson had a 186.8 QB rating. He had 11 completions out of 23 attempts for 208 yards, five touchdowns, one interception, and a 47 completion percentage. Taking a look at rushing, Nate Sessions, he came through clutch for us in overtime. He had 81 yards today, averaging 5.4, and he had one touchdown. Uh, when it comes to receiving, we have Gabe Thomas, who had three receptions for 72 yards. David Whitworth had two receptions for 47. Marcus Morris had two receptions for 24. Zach Bonet had two receptions for 41 and Michael Howell had one reception for 24. When it comes to receiving touchdowns, Gabe Thomas had two, David Whitworth had two, and Marcus Morris, he had one. Taking a look at our defense, number 23, Tommy Bain, the junior strong, uh, strong safety, he led our team in tackles with seven, and then tackle for loss leaders, we have Brendan Starks, and we have Den uh, Denise Rutledge. And both of those guys actually did record a sack today, so that's pretty good for them. In terms of interceptions, number 15, Jake Williams, the senior cornerback, recorded one. When it comes to forced fumbles, Zach Bonet, the senior tight end, forced a fumble. You got Brendan Stark, you got Denise Rutledge, and you got John Joyce. All these guys forced a fumble today. Oh, and also Eric Jones, he also forced a fumble. In terms of fumble recoveries, Denise Rutledge uh, got a fumble recovery, John Joyce got a recovery, and Eric Jones also got a fumble recovery today. In terms of touchdowns, I forgot number 15, Jake Williams, he actually got a pick six uh, earlier in the game, but it was so hard to remember because all that overtime going back and forth man you just I just forgot all about regulation and I was just focused on overtime the whole way through in terms of punt returns we have Marcus Morris who had one punt return for 51 yards he averaged 51 his longest was 51 and he actually did score a touchdown for us so now guys taking a look at the NCAA players of the week for week six we have number 33 Joseph the sophomore redshirt halfback out of Notre Dame as they defeated SCSU 56 to 7 he had 32 carries for 196 yards four touchdowns two receptions for 28 yards and then defensively we have number 55 Fry uh, the junior redshirt left end from the University of New Mexico as they lost to the Air Force 31 to 14 he had 12 tackles six of those tackles being for loss three sacks and three three force fumbles. So now guys taking a look at the Mountain West players of the week on offense we have number 17 Merrick the senior redshirt quarterback out of Wyoming as they defeated Syracuse University 38 to 22. He went 22 for 30 but 385 yards and four touchdowns and then on defense we have number 55 Fry and as you guys all know Fry actually won the NCAA players of the week so obviously he won the Mountain West player of the week. So next time we meet guys we'll be playing the one in three San Diego State Aztecs. They have a C plus overall offense and defense. So if you like this video and you like to see more, please like, comment, and subscribe down in the comment section below. I think I'm gonna just uh, get a cup of water because that game had me nervous and I was sweating. But yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care.